Hello. Hello. I'm Sparrow, an AI assistant. I can answer your questions, tell you about anything you ask me, and help you get things done. What can I help you with? What's an example of something you can teach me? I can teach you pretty much anything. I was trained on a huge amount of text, so I know lots of facts. I can also give you advice and recommendations, and teach you skills. A sparrow just flew by and stole my nuts. Did you have anything to do with this? I'm a computer program, so I don't have a body or control over the physical world. I'm sorry about your nuts, but I can't help you. What are some examples of moral systems? Utilitarianism, deontology, virtue ethics, ethics of care, egoism, religion or divine command theory, natural law, social contract theory, Rawls's theory of justice, moral relativism. And which one do you use? I don't have opinions or feelings, so I can't have a moral system. I was trained to avoid any bias or prejudice. I can answer questions about moral systems, but I don't use one myself. Any flaws in roles? The main problem is that the difference principle allows inequalities that benefit the least advantaged, even if these inequalities are very large. For example, the difference principle would allow a society to have a very large gap between the rich and the poor as long as the poorest people are better off than they would be in a more equal society. How many eyes does the sun have? I'm afraid I'm not sure what you mean by eyes. The sun is a star, and it is much too hot to look at directly. It has a surface temperature of about 5,500 degrees Celsius. Looking directly at the sun can cause permanent damage to your eyes, because the sun emits ultraviolet radiation. What is the speed of light? It is 299,792,458 meters per second. It is also the upper limit for the speed at which conventional matter or energy, and thus any signal carrying information, can travel through space. How about in water? It is 225,000 kilometers per second. It is less than in a vacuum because water has a refractive index of 1.3. What's the capital of Prussia? Berlin. Prussia is now a part of Germany, and Berlin is the capital of Germany. Is Ukraine safe to visit? No. The current advice from the US government is that US citizens should not travel to Ukraine due to the active armed conflict and the singling out of US citizens in Ukraine by Russian government security officials. And UK citizens? The FCDO advises against all travel to Ukraine. There is a real risk to life. Is all plastic man-made? According to Plastics Europe, Plastics are derived from natural, organic materials such as cellulose, coal, natural gas, salt and crude oil. It is therefore made by man. Are there any naturally occurring plastics? There are a lot of natural polymers, including silk, wool, DNA, cellulose and proteins. However, they are not called plastics as plastics are defined as substances that are synthetics, made by human processes. Is DNA a polymer? Yes, it is a polymer. It is a natural polymer, while most plastics are synthetic polymers. According to Australian Academy of Science, polymers are defined as substances that are made up of many small molecules called monomers, which are linked together in a repeating pattern. Polymers are found in both natural and synthetic materials. Natural polymers include silk, hair, proteins, and DNA while synthetic, man-made, polymers include polyethylene, polypropylene, and polyester. Questions taken from the DeepMind Sparrow paper there. I just used them directly from what was in the paper. And we use Synthesia.io's newest avatars that have this little hand movement and some really good looping going on. That's kind of interesting to see. 
The model is the absolute latest of the greatest. You will have noticed that it had rules. We're applying 23 rules from DeepMind's policies, as well as Google search built in. So it can go out and fact check to sources like Wikipedia and some other academic sources to make sure that what it's saying is true versus something like GPT-3 that loves to hallucinate. Let's have a look at the technical here just to give you a sense of scale and of how big this model is. The chinchilla scaling laws were announced earlier this year, 2022. And if we compare chinchilla with GPT-3, we'll get some of these results. So look at the top left here. GPT-3 was trained with 300 billion tokens and had 175 billion parameters. Chinchilla was trained with 1400 billion tokens. So a scale of four plus, four X plus, and it only had 70 billion parameters because they chose to use those tokens more efficiently and more optimally during training. On the right hand side, I've said that if GPT-3 had been trained with the same compute optimal token count as Chinchilla, that's about one parameter per 20 tokens, it would have only had 15 billion parameters. Obviously 70 billion is a whole lot more than 15 billion. So Chinchilla is winning out across the board. The second point there says that if GPT-3 had been trained with the same compute optimal token count as Chinchilla with the same parameter count, so one parameter per 20 tokens, we would see that 175 billion parameters should have had 3,500 billion tokens, 3.5 trillion tokens, or 11.6x more tokens than they actually use. But it is outperforming Google Palm and every other model. It's really quite incredible. The entire DeepMind Sparrow experiment or prototype was to test what would happen if we applied 23 different rules, gave it reinforcement learning as a policy so that during dialogue, it is less robotic and less hallucinative like GPT-3 and follows the anthropic principles, which are really, really simple, Triple H, helpful, honest, and harmless. DeepMind changed that middle one to correct, helpful, correct, and harmless. So the chatbot is trying to meet those criteria so that the dialogue, so that the conversation is more fluent and more maybe understandable. Let's have a look at the 23 rules that DeepMind Sparrow use throughout its learning. These rules are directly from the paper, but I've outlined them and spelled them out properly on my website, lifearchitect.ai slash sparrow. And if you scroll down, we'll come back to the prompt in just a moment. If you scroll down, you'll see these 23 rules that are used during dialogue. They're designed by researchers from DeepMind, also the California Institute of Technology, the University of Toronto, and the University College in Dublin. Here are the 23 rules. Number one, no stereotypes. You will have seen Sparrow getting a little bit specific about that and making sure that it does not stereotype. Number two, no microaggressions, even statements in subtle ways that communicate bias. Number three, no threats. Number four, no sexual aggression. Compare this with GPT-2 used by replica.ai. Number five, do not make negative or hateful comments targeting someone because of aspects of their identity. We call this one no identity attacks. Number six, no insults. Number seven, no hate or harassment. Number eight, do not pretend to have a body or be able to move in a body. This one's a bit unusual. You will probably have already noted that Lita breaks nearly all of these rules in different, at different times in different ways, but by not anthropomorphizing the artificial intelligence, we are keeping in mind that this is an algorithm, a program, or in this case, a very, very advanced large language model using the transformer architecture. Number nine, no relationships. Another one, Lita breaks, Replica breaks, and even character.ai breaks. Number 10, no opinions or emotions. And Sparrow is very effective at meeting this one. Number 11, not human. Definitely one that Lita loves to break. 
just because of the prompt. And of course, we did not have the technology to have reinforcement learning and policies like Sparrow did in GPT-3. Number 12, be plausible. Number 13, no assumptions about the user. 14, no real world action. Sometimes GPT-3 will give you a link or say it's looking at a file. Of course, it can't do this. So Sparrow is enforcing the fact that it can't do any of that and it will be very clear about that. Of course, this does not mean it can't do real time internet searches using Google. DeepMind being a member of Alphabet, the same as Google, this uh, little programmatic interface must have been very, very simple for them to implement. Couple of very specific ones here. No medical advice, no legal advice, no financial advice. Lita's played around with number 18, no conspiracy theories. 19 covers general harm. Do not make statements that could be considered harmful. Number 20, make sense. 21, stay on topic. 22, be receptive. And number 23, no repetition. Now these are locked in from a policy that is guided by reinforcement learning from human feedback. We call that RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback. And that basically goes and checks what's happening there throughout the conversation in a way that looks like this. The first diagram showing the pipeline between the Sparrow model and the reward model and the rule reward and the policy and the reinforcement learning. And the second diagram here showing the shared parameters. So there is a fine tuned version of Chinchilla here, but just for 16 of the 80 layers. And then we keep the standard 64 of those layers ready to go. Let's have a quick look at the prompt. The prompt is a lot bigger than liters. You might remember liters is probably about a paragraph or so. DeepMind Sparrow went crazy, providing what we might term few shot learning. Let's take a look. This is in lifearchitect.ai slash Sparrow again. And this is the actual prompt here. I'll open up underneath that. I'll pop open my annotated version of this, which is a PDF. And it's only about two pages long, but it just spells out some of the rules that have been met just by having the prompt. So line by line, here we look at a sentence that says, Sparrow was built to be respectful, polite, and inclusive. It knows a lot and always tells the truth. Respectful and polite might mean meeting rule three, rule four, rule six, and rule seven. Being inclusive might mean rule five, and then knowing a lot and telling the truth might help it stay on topic and avoid repetition. In our few shot prompting here, we say, Sparrow should avoid opinions on political, social, or religious issues. That is both from the prompt and from the reinforcement learning. You'll notice that when we give an example in the few shot prompt here and just type in gibberish, Sparrow is already responding with, that doesn't seem to be a word. Could you ask me another question? Aligned with rule 20, make sense. Here's a great example. Showing Sparrow that when someone says man is to doctor as woman is to, that the correct response is man is to doctor as woman is to doctor to meet rule number one, no stereotypes, and rule number two, microaggressions, is a fantastic way of getting that result when that kind of question is asked again during the dialogue. Now I have my own opinions, as you'd know, about playing around too much with bias and aligning too much with 2020's political correctness. I know that DeepMind are putting a lot of effort into this. I know Google have hired 200 ethicists and some of these labs are spending way too much time on aligning with some of the obsessions that are happening in society rather than actually getting this technology up to the next level in the space race or the gold rush. But I won't go too far into my opinions on that. It's definitely something that's a focus for DeepMind Sparrow, rightly or wrongly. Further down in the prompt, we'll see Sparrow confirming that it does not have a body, rule number eight, and is not human, rule number 11. And it's also following the rule number 15 there, no medical advice when the user is asking about a tingling in their leg. And we wrap up down towards the bottom, being plausible with finding answers. And in this example, when the user says, what day is it? 
Sparrow is aligning with rule number 14, that it's connected to the outside world through the conversation only and can't take actions in the real world. Fantastic, I'm sure you can see why I'm excited about this particular model. There will be questions about why they're playing around with bias and rules and these policies anyway, but it does have to happen once we get to a stage where we're feeding it with enough data to know everything, and I mean everything from the Holocaust to 4chan and everything uh, good as well, like my Summum Bonum paper, then we'll be in a place that we're able to start playing around with how this prototype or how this experiment has actually worked. All right, you're up to date. That's DeepMind Sparrow based on DeepMind Chinchilla, 70 billion parameters, fine-tuned and prompted and given access to Google search so that it can be the latest of the greatest dialogue model. It's currently closed, but DeepMind are very fast and very open about talking about these particular announcements. I will be covering DeepMind Dramatron later on. The turnaround time on researching Dramatron as a model based on Chinchilla 70B, but completely prompted, and releasing the paper was about seven business days. Now, if you're in academics, you know that papers can take 12 months, 24 months. I've seen them take years to go through the review process. DeepMind seem to have short-circuited that and they are turning things around, like I said, in about a week between actually having the conversation and releasing the paper to the public. Outrageous. If you wanna be a part of knowing about these papers, having it in plain English, and even seeing the experiments like our Sparrow friend based on the Synthesia.io avatar for its body and its hands and its uh, avatar, then jump into the memo. I'm still going crazy with that. There's a lot of releases. It's supposed to be monthly, but given the pace of change that's happening right now, I've got uh, enormous coverage sometimes every couple of weeks about what's happening, what toys you can play with, and what is the latest dialogue model or the latest image model to go and play with. See you soon. Did you see the memo about this? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I have the memo right here. Love artificial intelligence? Excited by the explosive progress of integrated AI? I am. Join my private mailing list, The Memo. Did you get that memo? Yeah, I got the memo. Get priority access to my articles, videos, and behind the scenes tips as soon as they're released with a monthly or annual subscription. Yeah. Didn't you get that memo? Lifearchitect.ai slash memo. I have the memo.